have we got a project for you. So today I found these old chairs. They've got an old cushion on them and we're gonna turn them into this beautiful masterpiece. It came with a table too, and we'll get to that in a little bit. That was a huge disappointment. So the first step we do, you know, it's TSP and wait, did you catch my little guy's face? Because that's when I told him he couldn't have another snack. It was 8.30 in the morning. I don't know about you, but being a working mom has its ups and downs. And when they know that I'm working, I feel like it's time to ask for about 10 snacks during this process. When you're working with TSP, and this stuff is in a sprayer, so it's so fantastic, you clean every groove. So I would get, see how dirty that is? I would get a scrub brush and a sponge, and then I use microfiber towels when I'm cleaning off afterward, and I spray it just lightly with water to get the rest of the gunk off. For these chairs, I got out my surf prep sander, which is super fantastic to work with because it takes up all the dust. So as I'm working on multiple projects, it just pulls all the dust into my shop back. Um, it was great to go around these curves. It didn't sand anything too much to where I was going to get a ton of bleed through, but it buffed everything super well because after I cleaned it and got all the gunk off and all the degreaser and every product that had been used on it, going through with a sander is going to make sure that your primer and your paint adheres really well and we're using a lacquer on these and so going through and giving everything a scuff up is going to make sure that the adhesion is awesome and it's going to last a long time and it's not going to be like the peeling paint that you see when a lot of people don't prep right. The reason why I picked a lacquer in this is it's a water-based lacquer by Rainier. I got it matched to a ferro and ball paint. But the reason for this is because kitchen table and chairs, I just feel like chairs get so marked up with kids' fingers and banged against things. And lacquer is a lot harder than milk paint with a water-based polycrylic over it. And so I've started using lacquer this last year and absolutely love its durability. Because the sander wasn't able to soak up all of the dust, I did go through and I cleaned these again to make sure that it was all dust free. That's the only way that shellac primer is gonna really adhere super well is when you scuff it up, but you also make sure the surface is fully clear of any dust and debris. Now the other challenge to these chairs is that one of them was in really poor shape with the caning. But first I primed them all with a shellac based primer. Um, it is shellac based, which means the cleanup is with ammonia or denatured alcohol. Do not be scared of this primer. I have a $75 gun that I'm using. I keep the primer in it all the time. You can find out how I do that on my Instagram. I go through and I prime and you get no bleed through with shellac and that's why I use it. Now I soaked these toothpicks in water overnight and I can't wait to show you what I'm gonna do with them. I didn't have the tools necessary to replace the caning completely and really the majority of it was in really good shape but I knew that I could make a faux repair and so toothpicks and wood glue are gonna be my BFF right now but we have to see if this is actually going to work I'll let you enjoy this process it was in real time so realize the amount of time I spent on these chairs I am using a Cricut tool right there with wood glue on it trying to push in and get the wood glue to stick right away but wood glue needs something to hold it for a little bit of time um, and it really is it's so indestructible so I ended up using some green frog tape later because I know it's not gonna fully stick to the wood but it's gonna hold it down in place so that wood glue can dry the spots where the caning was missing completely, I shredded these toothpicks into two so they were a little bit flatter like the caning, and then you just literally peel it apart, and that's why I used the water to get them all softened up. Um, and I threaded them through, or I put them as braces to um, create the caning look. Now I had to do the piecing of this in sections so that I could get some parts to dry, realize where it needed more, and then come back through with, with some cross diagonal sections. And priming this piece first really helps you because it's gonna show you where all the imperfections are and where you need to fill in. It's gonna be the same thing with the tabletop when I know when I need to repair.
hope you enjoyed that. Now I'm going over it with that primer again to make sure that everything is primed, ready to go, and then I can fix any other places that need to be repaired. Now it's not perfect, but it's a good broken masterpiece. When shellac primer is sprayed or brushed really, it does need a little bit of a buff. So I'm using my 220 or this is pretty fine grit on this just to get off any rough spots or anywhere that it's spattered. It makes the surface ultra smooth. It gets rid of a lot of imperfections and then you're just going to wipe it down with the tack cloth before you go to paint. The painting was ready to be painted and I brought out my little tiny helpers. They love working with me um, to paint the caning of the chairs. Um, I showed them how to do this without getting a ton of drips. There's the repaired chair right there. And then I put the lacquer on just a corner of it and did a scratch test to make sure that it was gonna be super durable. I'm showing you a lot more of the behind the scenes process because I think that people don't realize the time it takes to paint something professionally. Even putting on things like tape, and I'm reusing this tape from another piece because frog tape is actually really expensive, and taking time to go around and making sure that it's perfectly lined up, getting your paper out of your paper roll, cutting it to length, taping that on, going around that, making sure that it's covered. It takes so much time, but thankfully I love what I do and I do charge for it. So I did not make enough off these table and chairs because I did not think that they were that perfect, but it was a fun process and a really good learning experience. Once the chairs are wrapped, everything is wiped with a tack cloth, you can get to work spraying. So in this one, I'm using my Wagner Flexio 5000. It's got the finished sprayer, which is a little bit smaller of a nozzle, and it goes on incredibly smooth, and it's really great with lacquer. And so I know you can't really see the green so much in this lighting right now, but it is the green lacquer that's going on. When you're spraying, you always want to move with the sprayer. You don't want to move the sprayer up or down without also moving your arm so that the sprayer stays level. And you always want to wear a respirator because those particles are not good to breathe. Taking off frog tape is one of the most satisfying parts of my job. I love it. Look at those fine lines. The girls did a great job on the caning, but we're actually going to repaint this later because I ended up changing the light color that I wanted. So stay tuned. Next up, we're gonna give a pause on the chairs and we are gonna come back to this table. So this table was a huge frustration for me because when I bought it, the lady said, you know, it's solid wood and I got it delivered. So I didn't even like take a look at it until it was already here and guess what? It's fully laminate and that's water damage that you can see that I sanded over on the top just to try and get it smooth and really with laminate, you can never sand enough to get the water damage out. So I knew this table was gonna be imperfect. I knew I would probably not make as much money as it was worth for all the work I put into it. But I never give up on a project and I just had to finish this one. So instead of doing a stained top, I decided that I needed to do a painted top. So I primed it all with primer. Then I could see more of the damage that needed to get fixed. I'm using just wood filler, sanding it back down, um, any divots on the top. And then and I really tried to go around and just make sure that every whole divot is filled because with that water damage you could tell from certain angles that it was raised up. When that wood filler is dry you want to sand it all the way through and this is when you can sand your primer as well. These chair pads were so thick and so old I had to wood glue that plastic piece back on but we got that nasty fabric off and all the batting that came with it. Batting is the fabric that's over the foam and it's really easy to replace. So if your cushions don't have it, it's good to grab a roll from Hobby Lobby. It's super cheap. So I'm cutting this and it's really just to cover the foam and so you don't have to cut it too wide. Then I'm gonna take the fabric and I'm gonna make sure that I cut around it two inches to give it room to pull up and staple. Any staple that is sticking up at all needs to be pulled out with pliers and you just take it and twist it off. Then you're gonna start pulling up your fabric with your batting and you're gonna use a pneumatic stapler. Trust me, it's so much easier. And you guys, this one's linked in the description. It's like 30 bucks. I have a great tutorial on recovering chairs that I'm gonna link in the top right right there. So if you need a full tutorial on how to do this process, go watch that video. Because I changed the tabletop to Sandbar by Dixie Bell, I went through on these chairs with a very 
thin artist brush and I put a paint wash. So a paint wash is basically you just add distilled water to your paint, you mix it up and it's a much thinner paint. And so doing a paint wash on this proved to be uh, really easy actually and it wasn't like I had to repaint the whole thing I just had to go over it with this wash the most important part was getting these edges so that I didn't have to tape everything up because that just it would have taken so long once I got the edges done I was able to take this rag that's just one of my kitchen rags I dipped it in the paint and then I just smeared it all over the chair and it didn't leak through to the other side and I was able to flip the chairs over and do both sides get them done and set them out to dry they dried really quick especially with the paint wash it's really dry paint already and you just add a little bit of water and it dries pretty quickly I'm wondering if I would have started this way with the rattan paint by Lily Moon if I had just done a wash over the cane had it looked the same. So keep that in mind. Try the paint wash first and don't water down all your paint. Just take a little bit of it, add some water in a separate container. Keeping a wet paper towel on hand through this process so I could wipe it off the lacquer was so key, but the lacquer was so easy to clean because it is water-based um, and it's a lacquer, it just came right off. So anytime I needed to swipe it clean, I just cleaned it right up. And this lacquer too, I create a sample jar for every client that buys one of my pieces. Um, it's really easy to touch up and it actually like blends in way better than milk and chalk paint. Back in my workshop, I was able to take the tape and cover off the lacquer and the tabletop was complete. Now, I'm sorry I didn't show you this process. I definitely showed it on my Instagram. And just like in a lot of my other videos, if you want to see any of the process of painting a tabletop, it's just like the process of painting furniture. So first I did the shellac and then I did the paint and then I did the top polycrylic satin-based seal. Now this is my new staging setup because I needed my workshop for more actual working space and my 10 by 10 vinyl took up a lot of space. I now clamp it to the top of my garage and I use a wall panel from Lowe's as my floor so it's a 4 by 8 and I use this space to stage most of my furniture. Now it's worked really well for dressers, it's worked really well for nightstands. This was my first table and chairs setting it up on here and I could not get the thing to not wrinkle behind it. I put bricks, I adjusted the tape, it just wasn't working out. But the staging looked really cute, the runner covered up any of the watermarks, the chairs looked really good and so I was able to capture some photos when the lighting got better and I'll show you what I did with them. But first things first, when you're taking photos with a camera phone, which is what I have, I have a Pixel 4 that I'm using right here for my photos. Um, my other phone is a Pixel 7, but that's what I take my videos with. You wanna line it up and make sure you have your grid on and you can see where it has a zero degree right in the middle. You wanna make sure that's in the yellow. So it'll let you know if you're off slightly to the left, it'll show you one degree, two degrees, up and down. And so you can get, you wanna get your photo from straight on. So when it is zero, zero, straight on photo, photos so that you can capture the best angle and then also get some close-up shots. Here are some of the shots I got. When you put your phone in portrait mode as well, it blurs out the background and then you can go into editing and adjust the lighting. You can adjust the photo. But here is the app that I'm really excited to show you. I had to zoom in on this, so sorry that it's so up close, but this app is called Photo Room, and you can take your photo, put it in, it clears out the background for you, and then you can create your own space to put it in and stage it in. You can even edit it to ask it for a specific room with specific things in it. It's all AI, and it works with that kind of technology. Now this is the pro version of it, so you do have to pay a few bucks for that, but I can't express how much it's worth it. And these photos look so real. So I took all these photos with different angles and the different shots I got. I put them onto Facebook or Marketplace and I was able to sell this table and chairs within a week. Here's some before and after. So that's the staging booth that I cropped it to and then here's the after of the scene that it put it in that I chose to put online. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for sticking with me through this process. I hope you learned a lot. Comment below and please subscribe. Thank you for all your support.